This review is for Monster Hunter Illustrations, published by Udon Entertainment, who have done a number of really great uh, Capcom art books. And so, I personally don't really like the, the contents of this book, it's not really my thing. However, I still think it is a really great book for people who are fans of Monster Hunter and for people who do um, enjoy this style of fantasy art that we'll see as we go through. So I will talk about the specs and some uh, information about the book, but because this channel has just um, hit 100 subscribers, which is very exciting, I just wanted to sort of take the the time, because this is such a monstrous book, pun absolutely intended, uh, I just wanted to, because I won't have as much to say because I'm not necessarily a, a, a big fan of the contents, just wanted to take the time to sort of uh, discuss the philosophies and ideas behind the, the reviews for this channel. So one of the reasons that I decided to start this channel was because I felt that books on the art and making of were not being reviewed the way they should. That is, people would either do reviews where they're just sort of, you know, recapping the the specs of the book with, you know, information you could find from the back of the book and the contents page. And then because, you know, 90% of the reviews I do are for books that are, you know, part of a franchise, you then get lots of reviewers who think that a book is worthy of their praise and time and money just because it has the the name of a franchise they love printed on it and then still other reviewers who have become you know so complacent with uh <laughs> terrible rushed art and making of books that they're content to give good reviews to books and publishers and authors and editors who do not deserve it. And so what I wanted to do to counter that is create reviews that very clearly blend and distinguish between my personal opinions and my objective observations of whether or not an art and making of book is genuinely a good book and so I thought this Monster Hunter Illustrations was a really great book to sort of discuss this because it it really shows clearly to me um, that distinction of a book that I personally don't really like but is still objectively a really great book and so I don't want to spend too long on, you know, going through what I don't like about it. I would much rather, because like I've said a couple of times now, this is a good book, I, I would much rather focus on the positives for people who m may enjoy picking up this book. But basically the reason that I don't really like the book is just because the art is not really my sort of thing. I didn't really like the... Um, the creature designs for the game, or the weaponry, or the character designs, and then there are very few environment designs. But like I've said, that was just me personally, and I would rather focus on positive things like, for instance, this page is fantastic. So let's have a look. So n there's not a lot of text, but you, you can see here, you're not just getting um, design notes that you get from um, a lot of the, they're called staff comments throughout the book, but then you're also getting sort of like lore information on some of the different creatures and then other things throughout the book. So as I said at the start, this book is published by Udon Entertainment. And, and Udon have done a ton of uh, English translation and releases for art books for uh, Capcom games, which I think is just fantastic because there are so many um, books released around the world in, in other languages that never get a English translation or major English release and so for Capcom to do that for these books and do them really well too is really really nice I think. The difference between uh, this English release and the original Japanese is that the original Japanese uh, book was two books in a slipcase uh, 
one sort of color book like we're going through now and then a black and white sketchbook um, and for this release they've both been combined you can see at the back here there's like I don't know 60 something pages on black and white sort of sketches so you're getting both books that were released in Japanese combined into one book here. And what's interesting about this book is that most of the Udon art books are published um, in a portrait format rather than this sort of landscape format which actually this this landscape format is actually more um, typical for art books. I happen to prefer uh, portrait ones though and also it's paperback in case you didn't see, which is sort of strange for a book of this size, but I actually think it's a really intelligent decision, and here you can see that I really don't have a whole lot more to say on such a big book, because now I'm talking about um, the binding, although I do think that stuff is very important, because with art books of this size, with pages this long, when you have um, a hardcover, the cover extends beyond the, the, the page leaves, which means if the, that the weight of the pages will be pulling down on the binding. And if you have any, you know, art books like this, the, a hardcover that you've had for a couple of years, you'll be able to see that the pages sag towards the end as they're sort of pulling on the binding. So by having this in paperback, it's actually a pretty intelligent decision because then the cover sits evenly with the pages so when it sits on the shelf there's none of that sort of sagging and pulling away at the binding um, of course there is the obvious risk of the glued binding for paperback books not being strong enough in which case you know then there's that that's a whole other load of trouble but this one actually seems the binding um, with this one and all of Udon's paperback art books seems to be really quite durable thus far. My really only um, objective criticism of the book is well first of all there are a couple of uh, typos but you know I never worry too much about that sort of thing but the other thing is you'll find a fair few pages where the layout could have been much more intelligent and space been used much more efficiently and very occasionally there will be just sort of these like glaring gaps where it almost looks like something was um, they forgot to put something in so like I said not really my thing I won't be keeping this book just because I'm not a really big fan of the design but for fans of Monster Hunter for fans of the type of design that you're seeing here, the sort of fantasy design, creature design, weapon design, character design, there's absolutely no reason you shouldn't get this book because for people who like the sort of things you're seeing, it does everything right. And I really do enjoy a lot of the um, the notes and the details and the way the book is sort of laid out and designed. And what's especially awesome for fans of this franchise is that most um, art and making of books can sometimes struggle to even reach between 160 and 200 pages and this one's 300 pages and even though I said that the layout is not necessarily the strongest it's still far better than you know a lot of other books which makes you really feel like you're getting the definitive art and design bible for the game which is for me is one of the main reasons that I um, enjoy these sort of books and so if you're a fan who feels the same way then you really will feel like you're getting uh, your money's worth and so see I just wasn't a really big um, fan of this sort of character design but if you are a fan of this sort of stuff then you really are going to love it because there's just so much if you're a fan of creature design there are so many sort of crazy and wild creatures and then in this section with the character design just the, the, the costumes are sort of so over the top but there are so many and they're so varied and you get them um, for each male and female design and and so even though I won't be keeping this book and because I'm not a very big fan of the contents I can absolutely see how someone would find this book fantastic. I was talking about <laughs> half the book to go and I don't really have terribly much more to say about it but um I just hope that at least maybe this has been a bit informative uh, as to the sort of reviewer that I aim to be because I do think there are, and I don't want to you know get into a too big a, a rant here but um, I do think there are a lot of problems with many reviews especially for these type of books and I, I really do want to try and be able to um, distinguish between giving my own personal opinion on the books as well as a very sort of thought out objective look 
and whether or not a book is good in order to, you know, help people decide if the book is right for them. And that's the whole reason that I started doing these flip throughs because, you know, pe most people are not going to bookstores to buy these books. So you don't get the chance to actually look through it for a couple of minutes and really decide. You might, you know, see a few photos online or be able to do a little, you know, see inside preview, but unless you can see the whole thing with these sort of books, it's it's really hard to know um, if you're going to like what you get. And publishers will use a lot of trickery in their sort of descriptions of trying to coax people into, you know, buying things. And so you miss out on that experience of being able to look through a book like you would in a store. And then you get reviewers who, we have a you know, there's a system in place where positive five-star reviews are always given sort of preference because the fact of the matter is, you know, five-star reviews are what um, publishers and booksellers want to see because they're the most encouraging for people to spend money. And I just wanted to sort of try and be a bit of a counter to that and give you a full nice look through so it's like you're at a bookstore going through um, and then also you know try and give you some objective information about the book that you may not be aware of immediately or that might help you in the the decision process on deciding if the book's nice to you and then also mixing in a <laughs> healthy dose of my own opinion really trying to make a sort of clear distinction between all those elements to help people you know save money to help people find the book that is right for them and i am so grateful to the hundred people who have subscribed thus far and if these reviews have been um, illuminating in any way in helping you uh you know either cautioning you against a book you may have thought would have been right up your alley um, and finding out that it wasn't or um encouraging you to buy a book you weren't sure on and hadn't seen the insides for and wanted to get a better view of or maybe even um you've seen a book that you weren't going to consider and now having gone through it with me you've you know discovered something you might not have otherwise then i'm really glad because that is absolutely the whole reason that i do these reviews